don't, we've had the opportunity to have a copy. Yeah. I think there will be, uh, in response to Representative Thompson's quest for his testimony today, I think there will be questions about specific issues within the Common Core standards uh, that there are objections that he is objecting to. I think there will be questions about uh, the level of support and the, the character and, uh, and the quarters from which the support for his bill are coming. Um, and uh, it'll just be interesting to uh, see you know, where we go from here. Uh, I, I know that, uh, or I sense that uh, there's not a lot of support for this bill within the committee itself. So uh, we'll just have to see how far reaching that support is. Do you, do you support? Pardon? What about you? I mean, what do you, what do you think of the bill? Do you support? No, I know you have to go through the process, but... <clears throat> no, I don't support the bill. I, I, I think it's a uh, step forward and six steps back. Uh, we'll go back to before 2007 if we back out on this. So, but he's entitled to a hearing. What do, you, what do you say to the people, I was at the Tea Party Convention a couple weeks ago, who said, this is the Obamacare of education. What do you, what do you, how do you respond to that? I go back to um, uh, several things. Um, there, there was a book published by a gentleman out of the University of Virginia, and Colleen, you know his name, and I can't remember it, but it was called, What Every American Should Know. It's back in the early Oh, E.E. Hirsch's e. uh, Four Knowledge Series. The, the genesis of this whole thing, I think, came from that book and maybe some other similar kinds of books. Uh, it kind of coalesced in, uh, in some... I mean, that basically said these are things that every American should know. Every American should know about these things. And it was a compendium of maybe a hundred pages of things that are just like one line or so. Uh, the first president of the United States, the 16th president of the United States, the capital of France, uh, and on and on and on and on and on. Things that we should absorb and learn as Americans. This whole thing began to steamroll. The military picked up on it because of the fact that they were having difficulties with their enlisted people transferring between posts in different states and different expectations between school districts and different levels of uh, testing and different uh, things that were being taught and they were having real problems and they wanted some, some uh, commonality and some, some consistency so that their children were not whipsawed between school districts. Uh, then the, uh, and of course the Reagan administration uh, a nation of risk uh, challenged us to do better with our educational system. So all these things came to bear, and uh, it had nothing to do with Obama. It had Obama was still in law school probably when this whole thing started, if he was even in law school yet. So uh, you know they, they've tried to portray this as uh, some kind of a vast conspiracy of the federal government and international conspirators to dumb down American education and make us less competitive as opposed to what it is. But I challenge anyone who has read the Common Core Standards to tell me one thing in those Common Core Standards that they believe that our children should not be learning at the times that they are set out to be learning. I mean, I think if they're solid, I think they're far superior to the standards that we have in Ohio today. And I think that while we can, we can probably Improve, it's a good start. And we shouldn't let down. This isn't permanent. I mean, this will be revisited every five to ten years. And we'll look at it and decide if we need to change it, add things, subtract things. But uh, for now, I think it's the best thing out there. Do you think so? It seems now from Thank you. 
rest of the, you know, presenters. Yeah, well, I mean, it's always, it's always easy to go back and criticize something that happened five years ago that maybe it could have been done better, but uh, maybe it could have been accomplished in a little bit different way. But it was accomplished in the way that it was accomplished with the people who accomplished it, which was the Governor's Association and school state officials, uh, state school officials. And it was adopted by 45 states voluntarily, uh, voluntarily, and uh, none of them had to do that. I mean, it, it went through a vetting process. Were there dissenters within the within the boards and the panels? Sure, but you're never going to have any kind of organization, any kind of system with as complex as this was that didn't have a few a few dissenters. But on the whole, I think it. Hi, Jim. Hey, Jim. Uh, I think uh, it. Uh, it was a pretty thorough process. It was, uh, it was uh, adopted in a way that everybody went into this with their eyes wide open. I mean, nobody forced Ohio to do this. Nobody forced Indiana to do this. Nobody forced Florida to do this. They voluntarily adopted it. And, and they, can, they can back out. 